Hello there, and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on machine learning for audio signals in Python. This is a course offered by Professor Schuller at the Humanau University of Technology. I am Renato, the instructor for these online materials, and on this tutorial we will talk about the denoising autoencoder. So basically, the denoising autoencoder is the same as an autoencoder, but instead of having a clean audio signal as, a, as its input, it has a noisy version. Usually, this noisy version has added noise, but it could also be other kinds of distortions. The goal of the denoising autoencoder is then to reconstruct the clean version of its input. Hence, it is trained on noisy signal as training sets. To avoid that the noise in autoencoder learns a specific instance of the noise, a new instance of the noise is generated, is generated for each epoch of the training process. In our example, we will use the same autoencoder structure as we used before, but we will train it with added noise. So what happens is that the training for loop will contain this expression here, where we are introducing the noise. Also, to make it shift invariant, we can also include a cyclic uh, round robin shift as another type of distortion in the training loop. So, for example, for the input and the um, input x and the target y, we can have this shift of one to the right, like this um, round robin. So, we will train trying to make it shift invariant. And then the training continues as usual for um, each epoch, and we have the um, zero gradient the optimizer, the loss backward, the optimizer step, and so on, like we've been doing before. So we will do two experiments. The first experiment we will use a stride of 512, and we will have some um, parameters of our uh, autoencoder using uh, 32 channels and a kernel size of 2048. And in the first experiment, we will use a stride of 512. And on the second experiment, we will reduce drastically this uh, stride and we will use a stride of 32. So for this first experiment, we are using exactly the same code as we used before previous tutorial, but with some modifications. So, in this first experiment, these are the parameters we are going to use. We are using the number of uh, input channels equals 1, output channels 32, kernel size of 2048, and a stride of 512. So, this is for the analysis part, and this is for the synthesis part of our autoencoder. Here we are going to use the introduction of the classic rock and roll song by ACDC, uh, Back in Black. And we are going to use uh, one channel, the left or right channel, to train and the other channel uh, to test. Like we did in the previous example. We still use the same optimizer, the same loss function. We are using the mean squared error loss function. We are using the... Um, ADAM optimizer, and here is where things change. So here we are including this shift to the right, and this is also called this round robin, and we are also introducing a different noise in a, for every epoch. So when we train, have this uh, loss. Going down, we train many epochs, and here we are going to plot the encoder and the decoder filter coefficients for the subband zero. And this is what we have here, the same as we did in our previous tutorial. Now we are going to test our model using um, the training set. And this is what we are doing here. We are making some predictions. And here is the target and the predicted signal. And we can also listen to it. So here is the input 
the mod and it was trained so it is the um, introduction of backing back by ACDC with added noise and it would sound like this The target is exactly the same audio file but without the noise and the prediction, the output of our model is given here. observe that there is a, a bigger difference to the original signal and the reconstructed version sounds very muffled. We can also test the model using a different file, so that file that was not used to train the model. So in this case is the other channel, so we used one channel to train and we tested also our model with the training set, but now we are going to use a different this is slightly different as it's uh, the same song, but we are taking the other channel and this is what we are doing here. Here is the original and the predicted, predicted signal and we can also listen. So here is the input of the model. We can hear that the noise is there, so this is the, we added this noise on purpose to train our model, and here is the output of the model, so the reconstructed. So this model never seen this file before, of course it's seen a very similar version of this uh, this file, which is uh, the left channel or the right channel, but this is just for learning purposes. So you would use thousands of different audio files, play around with different hyperparameters and um, network architectures. But this is what we have for this uh, tutorial. It's a starting point, and this is. First experiment using a stride of 512. And we see that the noise is uh, less present, but it also sounds very muffled. Here is the input with noise. So the denoise is uh, more or less working, but the output is very muffled. So we also see that the sh shift sensitivity is not there anymore because of the way we trained. So here in the test version, so we are using the test uh, the, for verification and we are adding a shift of 100 samples, so this is what we are doing here. And we are also adding some noise here. So, what uh, we do is that we take, for training, we used one channel of a stereo audio file. So, let's say we use the left channel. We added some noise and we trained our model and we included this round robin. So, we included this shift during uh, epochs to try to minimize this um, shift and to have this um, minimizes shift sensitivity and it seems that we achieved this because when we are testing our model using a verification set so it's a different audio file so we trained with the left channel now we're testing with the right channel and we are adding here 100 sample shift and we are also adding some noise so the next experiment we are going to change just the um, stride. That means that we're 
reducing the downsampling and upsampling factor. So before we used 512 and now we are using 32. And you see that now the number of subbands is equal to the N factor for downsampling and upsampling. So we have 32 up channels. We have the same kernel size as before, but we have now stride equals to 32. And we will try to see what happens. So basically now we are processing more data as our strides are much smaller. So the model is exactly the same. We just changed the stride value and we will do the same thing. So it's the same audio for training and for testing. Everything stays the same. We still have this round robin with the shift by one to the right. We are adding noise for training. But now you, you will notice that it trains or it optimizes much slower than before because now it has to process much more data. And here again, we're plotting the encoder and decoder filter coefficients. And here we will test our model using the training file. So here we have the target and the predicted signal. And we can listen to it. So this is the same as before. There is no change on the training um, file. Apart that we are adding different noise every epoch. So we see the noise there and now the reconstructed signal, so the output of our model, and we have So it is a bit denoised, so we perceive less noise than the original. Um, the input to our model, and it's now less muffled than before. So if we compare this, with the experiment where we used uh, 512, the stride of 512, So it's less muffled. And here we can also do the same for the validation, so our verification, not using the same file as we trained, but using a different file. Here we have our reconstructed. And here was the original, the input of the model. So we can perceive, we can perceive more noise. So it seems that our denoising autoencoder is working. And we can also uh, change parameters, change hyperparameters change the network structure and try to achieve better results and of course you would need to use very good and big data set to achieve a good uh, autoencoder the noise encoder. so we see that uh, when it finally the model is finally trained we can hear that the signals indeed sound a bit better and less muffled. And this also shows the effect of the stride. So too low, it means uh, there will be a long training. And too high, we will obtain less quality in this case. So that's it for this tutorial. 
and we will continue with uh, more on machine learning for audio signals in Python next time.